Hey guys, it's Ross. Um, I want to do a quick video because this is like one of those topics that is just taking me forever to blurt out as much information as I can because there's just so much of it. And uh, I really wanted to do a long one with this, but I'm trying to get out a lot of uh, content for you guys because I'm getting a lot of requests. And this particular one, uh, I think is just completely underrated. Uh, and nobody's really asked me about it, but I think it's going to be probably one of the most important topics uh, that I've ever talked about, which is planting um, fig trees in the ground here in a cold climate. And I recently have done a planting here, as you can see. I've done a planting of one fig tree, two, three, four, five. Five trees. On the end here, it's tough to see, but this is a pomegranate. This is a, a pomegranate called Salavatsky. It's a Russian variety. Um, and it's one of the hardiest, if not the hardiest, uh, pomegranates in existence. I know lots of people in the area here that live in even colder places than I do that have great success with this in zone 6A. I'm sorry, in zone 7A and zone 6B. So we get down to zero here quite regularly. And uh, this should be just fine in this particular microclimate. And the reason why I planted them here, I want to talk to you guys about that. Uh, I also want to talk about the varieties very quickly, but the reason why I planted them here is that this is the best perfect spot imaginable in my yard. I'm not even kidding. Like it's, um, it's quite insane and I could really go into the many, many reasons why, uh, but in going into those reasons, it may take me a long time to get through that. But what's really nice is that we have the sun right here. This is midday. This is, um, this is a south facing um, planting here okay so the sun rises here goes all the way up to where you guys see it now and then comes over here this is the most sunniest spot arguably in my yard so it gets a lot of sun and that sun brings lots of heat now I just did a video on why figs love heat even more than sunlight so that heat is really gonna add a huge amount of metabolism to these trees uh, they really are growing quite vigorously um, for really only being here in the ground for a very short time. And I think a lot of that has to do with the fact that there is just so much heat here. In fact, it's only um, the middle of May and my brassicas here in this, this, um, this bed have already started bolting. Uh, we did have some warm weather here, but this is bok choy, uh, or maybe even some kind of cabbage. I think it's bok choy because my other bok choy that was much larger has already bolted. This guy, this stuff's already bolted. If I take the soil temperature of this area, even this bed here, or even this bed here that I've planted them in, you'll notice that I actually have planted them in a raised bed, which is quite uh, interesting because... Uh, they're actually above grade, these trees. And I'm gonna get into that in a second, but if you were to take the soil temperature here versus realistically any other part of my yard here, <laughs> you would see a dramatic difference. I mean, I took the temperature a couple days ago. I have three fig trees in the ground right in here. Um, the temperature there is about 60 to 65. And the temperature along the house here is actually uh, 70 to 75. Uh, actually, this raised bed here that I have all the garden uh, vegetables in, the annuals, this is 75. And then back in here is actually in the, in the, um, the late 70s. So apologies for that. I just want to be correct on this. Um, so these trees are really, really growing. And the fact that this is a really warm area combined with the fact that I have this in like a raised bed here is just massive. So you could see that uh, you know, my garden bed is actually four inches off the ground. You know, this is the level of the grade here. And then what I have behind it is another raised bed that I put in, and that's eight inches off the ground. Um, so these guys are really planted quite high. And a lot of you guys may be thinking, I'm in such a cold area. Um, I actually want to plant them deep. And I recommend doing that. Totally do. Um, what I mean by deep is that you're gonna to wanna to take this 
this root ball here, if you were planting this tree, and actually plant this tree, uh, if this was the top of the root ball, you'd want to plant it up here so that this was now the new top of the root ball so that you have some, um, some buds actually below the surface here protected from um, the cold in the winter time so that if this whole top of the tree were to die back this year, um, you'd actually have new shoots coming from the bottom that are well protected and that would happen for you every single year. And I agree with that. And I did that. I planted them um, about six inches deep. So even though they're actually, the root ball is quite raised above grade, um, I did plant them slightly deeper uh, than that. So overall, they're about somewhere in the neighborhood of right now, they're about at grade, planted at grade. Because um, they're about six inches deeper, but the raised bed is about six inches higher. So roughly they're about at grade. Um, but in time, the roots will fill in these the bed here, this raised bed that I've put in recently, and the roots will be all in here, and then this will really get a huge effect from the heat, the sunlight that's coming down, reflecting off the house, reflecting off of the, the concrete panel back in here that really absorbs that heat during the day, releases it at night, keeps the nighttime temperatures quite high, and then um, really affects that root zone even the soil hitting or the sunlight hitting that um, wooden panel here, it's probably quite warm and then warms up the soil. I mean, there really is just a huge compounding effect here on the amount of heat that these trees are getting. And then what that actually, another portion that's even making this even warmer is that this is at the top of a slope. So we're south facing and we're also at the top. If you go down here from the house and you go all the way down to uh, this area down here, past the hammock towards the fence, that's all the way at the bottom of that hill, which is actually quite a significant drop. So we're looking at um, really, um, even on a macro level, lots of heat. Um, and then the also, the really important thing and the last thing I wanna mention here about this planting, um, actually, you know what, let's take a quick break on the, the, uh, <laughs> on the lecture here. We could talk about variety. This is Italian 258. Just planted that. This is Noir de Barbantane. This is Figo Preto. Um, that is Nero 600M. Actually, not quite that hardy, uh, but it comes from an a place in Italy that is 600 meters high, so it's believed to be quite hardy. And that is Pastilieri. Pastilieri is quite hardy. Uh, Figo Preto. Uh, a grower in New Jersey who lives 20 minutes from me has had great success with it. Also Noir de Barbantane and also Italian 258. So I'm kind of just following in his footsteps right now with these varieties and trying to make them really work here. They're really not that hardy, but the fact that this is such a huge microclimate that I have them in, the perfect location, um, they're going to work here. I have no doubts. Uh, and if they die back the first winter, that's okay. What it'll end up doing is protecting the base of these trees with lots of mulch. Um, trying to keep the trees, uh, the mulch aerated, but having that mulch make sure that uh, it is adding some layer of protection to that wood, to the roots as well. You really want to do that every winter if you live in a cold climate. Um, but to go on back to the lecture here and talk about the last reason why I planted them here is because of water and significantly uh, water plays a huge part on the success of these trees uh, you know like I've said I have them in a raised bed that's a micro level of drainage right there that's a nice system of drainage plus they're on the top of a hill it drains down that, that way away from the house uh, so we have even more drainage plus I amended the soil quite heavily because when I added in that raised bed I took some of that native soil that was there and then mixed that in with a really well draining um, compost and pine bark mix that I use with all of my potted plants so this whole system here is extremely well draining and what this water will do okay is really important so like if you're gonna pay attention to any part of this video I think this would be it um, I think water 
not necessarily cold is probably the major killer of fig trees in a cold climate. Um, you know, if you get down to zero degrees, anything lower than that, you're kind of getting to a point where, okay, the cold's killing them. <laughs> but I find that even, you know, there's reports of people telling us that people have uh, overwintered their fig trees without any or little damage in a place where that gets down to negative 10 degrees Fahrenheit. So what the hell is that all about? Well, I think it has a lot to do with the water. And personally, um, for myself, with my plantings that I have in other parts of the yard, I have two out in the front. You know, um, I have two out, I have three out over here that I planted this fall. You know, there really is a huge, um, I guess a pretty good basis for this. And a lot of my trees that I'm about to show you right now, sorry for if the camera's shaky at all, but you know, these trees here, I protected them. You know, I didn't add the rocks in yet, but I had a whole bunch of soil that I mounted up and a whole bunch of wood chips that I mounted up to really protect these limbs here. And um, this is Hardy Chicago, arguably one of the more hardy varieties. And this thing seems to be doing all right. Um, what didn't do all right was my Maltese Falcon here. This one died back to the ground. Uh, there was lots of wood left over. You can see that large stem there that I pruned off. Um, and it wasn't because of the cold, because I was protecting these trees with these wood chips, you know? I was protecting them. Um, but the water got to these so much that uh, it ended up rotting parts of the tree. And not only that, but I think that there's some kind of thing with water we had a really wet winter here, and I think there's some kind of something that happens, some kind of interaction with water in the wintertime that really damages these trees. Um, my JH Adriatic also died back to the ground, um, and it looks like there's probably a shoot that's going to come up in here. But, you know, protecting these guys doesn't always work, and even wrapping them doesn't always work. That's really risky business. So what I would rather do is plant them in such a appropriate and um, great microclimate that's gonna make these guys have much better drainage and much better heat so that when these guys are in the really nighttime cold temperatures of the winter here that are zero degrees or even this year we got down to negative one, that they're being protected um, by microclimates and you know, I really do believe, and this is my, um, I mean, I can't really prove it yet other than show you guys, you know, the success of other people that live very close to me. Um, but I will come back to you guys at the end of this year and show you guys that this is working for me. Um, I honestly believe that. I'm, I wouldn't have put such expensive and rare trees in the ground if I didn't think this was gonna work. So um, yeah, um, that's the video guys. Um, I'm also gonna put down in the link of this video an extremely good read on this topic. If you live in a zone that's zone eight, zone seven, zone six, zone five, um, maybe not zone five because you're gonna need to protect it. Uh, you're gonna need to wrap it probably. Even zone six, you may need to wrap it. But if you live in those zones, and you're really on the edge of keeping the thing alive and, and having it die back to the ground every year. Uh, this is a really well worth read. Uh, my friend Sergio Carlini is the one who wrote it. He's an Italian uh, fig grower in, um, the guy has just been growing figs his whole life. He's done tons of research on the topic. I mean, when I go to somebody, when I try to find somebody who really knows what they're talking about, that's the guy I want to talk to. Um, and he's very available too. And he wrote this article that's just open to the public for anybody to read regarding this very topic. And I really think he hits the point on the nail on the head and I think he really hits the point home. Um, so I'm gonna put the link in the bottom there. And with a combination of what I talked about in this video, plus that article, I think you're really, you guys are really gonna um, benefit from maybe even putting a fig tree in a similar condition that I have and then next year, guys, I'm going to do an update at this time of the year. And I'm going to show you guys what the damage is, if any, and um, prove to you guys that this has worked. So I'll talk to you guys soon. And uh, 
Hope you guys enjoyed the video. All right, talk to you later.